If you're new here, we're Howard and Caitlin Newsday. We've been traveling full-time in our Winnebago Navion for over two years with our seven-year-old Puggles, Piper and Ella. They've been to some incredible places, watching the sunrise on Cadillac Mountain in Maine, playing on the beaches of Florida and California, and even hiking to glaciers in Alaska. Earlier this year, we added four more Pauls to our little adventure family after finding Scout on a beach in Mexico. She came back to the U.S. with us in July and has been exploring nonstop ever since. Together, the five of us are exploring North America and beyond in our little home on wheels. If you've been following us for a bit, you know that we had some trouble and regression with our three pups, Piper, Ella, and Scout. And we'll have some links below in the description and also at the end of the video if you want to check them out and kind of learn more about what we did in order to try and alleviate them. And I am happy to report that we have made a lot of progress and things are a lot better here inside the RV. For the remainder of this video, you must be holding a dog in order to speak. <laughs> So you might be wondering, what is it like to live with three dogs in 200 square feet? And with that brings its own set of challenges. <laughs> One of which is making sure that the dogs all have their own space where they feel comfortable and know that they can go there and it's their safe place. We use uh, crates. We actually have two on board. We generally have one set up. We also use the bathroom now as a place for them to rest and relax. And we have what we affectionately call dog town underneath our dinette. And to avoid situations happening, we can separate them completely and there will be no interaction between them. And Piper and Ella have been crate trained since they were puppies, so they love the crate and they see that as a safe place. And Scout loves the crate. <laughs> she does. We also try our best, even though we're in an RV, to buy our food in bulk because we're feeding three dogs every day, twice a day. We buy our food at Costco and we were able to find this container that allows us to pour directly out of the container into smaller containers that we store on the inside. So it's a bit of a combination of outside storage for about 40 pounds worth of food and then inside storage for the day to day. Don't worry about jotting everything down. Every product that we mentioned today, including the things that they're wearing, is going to be in a link below in our Amazon shop. And that's all categorized by section. So you just go to the dog section and you'll find every product there. One of the main questions we get from fellow RVers and non-travelers is what do we do with Piper, Ella, and Scout when we're out and about? Because we can't always take them with us. And if you live in a sticks and bricks, it's really not that different. You're probably leaving them at home because they're comfortable and safe there. And this is Piper, Ella, and Scout's home. <laughs> So they hang out here, but there are extra steps that we take to make sure that they're safe and comfortable when we're not here in the RV with them. Caitlin, you just need to hold a dog. I can't talk with my hands and they're very heavy. They're 25 pounds each. So I'm lifting the rule of having a dog to talk. The number one thing that helps us with peace of mind and temperature control here in the RV is our Max Air fan that came stock on our Winnebago Navion. This is a self-ventilating fan that we can set the temperature to and it will open or close depending on what the temperature is here inside the RV. So it really helps regulate that. And we always set the fan no matter if we're boondocking or hooked up at an RV park because in the event that the power were to go out in an RV park and it's hot and the AC dies, the fan will kick on automatically and vent the RV out because it runs off of the RV batteries. So so it really is a great peace of mind feature. The second thing that really helps me feel better because I'm one of those like crazy dog moms is when we are out and about, we have a baby monitor that we can actually keep an eye on them. And the really cool thing about this one, this is an Arlo baby monitor. Not only can we see them, but it will send push notifications to our phone if the temperature gets too high or too low. It also monitors air quality and there's an audio function too. So if there's a noise in here, if they're barking or something, we'll get a push notification as well. And this is actually pretty cool because we found out Scout's secret hiding spot because of this camera. <laughs> oh, oh, there she is. <laughs> You're so silly. And dogs shed a lot and I like to clean a lot. So luckily we have an awesome vacuum here. This is the Dyson Animal V8 and it is great for RV life because it's cordless. You can charge it up and then unplug it and you don't need to have a plug anymore while you're vacuuming. And it's really good at sucking up all the dog hair and the dirt that gets tracked in. I will say we did try the newer Dyson, which was the Animal V11. And I actually like the older model better. It's a bit lighter, which is much better for RV life. It does come with a bunch of accessories that are detachable and you can see this breaks down pretty small and you can store it. So another great thing for tiny living. And as Kayla mentioned, this is their home, but we do try and take them out as often as we can. 
We try and fill their days with activities whenever possible. We're always looking for dog parks, trails that they can hike along with us, sometimes a lake, whatever it is, we do try and get them out and active because let's be honest, it's 200 square feet and they're gonna get kind of cooped up. We're also a big fan of the free and premium app, All Trails, because you can search and then sort by dog friendly trails. That's pretty awesome. We're also a big fan of the website bringfido.com, which not only shows activities for dogs, but also restaurants and even hotel accommodations. Hot tip, a lot of La Quinta inns across the country will allow you to stay for free with your dog. I'm in scout seat right now. It's actually my seat, this is my desk. But whenever we're moving in the RV, this is where Scout likes to sit. And we have specific spots for the dog so that way they can safely travel with us. Piper and Ella prefer to be behind the driver's seat and we set up a dog bed there and they generally cuddle up and Piper typically sleeps almost the entire time we're driving. When we first hit the road in August of 2018, Ella was actually having a pretty hard time with it. We did find some natural melatonin treats and we would give her one of those before we would hit the road and it would help to calm her down. Now we don't have to do it at all. And in fact, they seem to kind of enjoy traveling. I know Scout does. Another really important thing about traveling with animals is having all of their up-to-date paperwork. And so we have this big file folder here. I have to add Scout's name to it. Um, but this is all of their shot information, any emergency information. Different states can have different regulations when you're traveling with pets. For example, when we went to Alaska in the summer of 2019, we had to have a specific health form for them. So all of that paperwork lives here. And in case there's any issue, we have all of their documentation with us. She's back to holding dogs. <laughs> got my little helper here again. Since we're traveling full time, we don't have a home vet that we can visit if they need help or shots or anything like that. Instead, we utilize Petco and PetSmart because many of their locations have veterinary services on site. And the great thing is it's a nationwide network. So once they visited one location, they're in the system and we can go to anyone throughout the country. And unfortunately, emergencies do happen on the road. One year ago this week, Piper and Ella got into some rat poison and actually ended up eating it. Thank goodness we were right there when it happened were able to identify what the substance was and then get them the care they needed. But we learned a lot of lessons during that time. One of which is you have to call a poison control helpline that's specific for pets. Vets will not proceed without direction from the pet poison helpline. So that's really important. We now have a specific number that worked for us and we'll link that below. We saved that just in case something were to happen again. And a lot of emergency facilities and vets in general will accept care credit, which will let you finance at 0% any costs that you incur during emergencies, which is also super helpful. And when emergencies do happen and we're in the middle of nowhere or a place we have never been before, we utilize Google to find a vet or an emergency care service that is 24 seven when those things unfortunately do happen. And when it's time for bedtime, they all go to their own beds. They are no longer sleeping in the bed with us. <laughs> it was a habit I had to break. Thanks to our wonderful trainer, Steve. He helped us see the light on that. But they all go to their separate space and they actually all sleep through the night, which is wonderful. And they don't get up until we're ready to get up and take them out. Hi. Huh? Oh. Whoa, and that about wraps it up. <laughs> RVing with dogs can be done and it is a lot of fun. Being able to see so much of the country with our little furry family members in tow is wonderful. These are some well-traveled dogs. And we hope this look inside our home on wheels has been helpful for you. But if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna see some of the adventures that Piper, Ella, and Scout have been on, just check out some of our other videos. And make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications when we post our weekly videos. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>